Elf from Anella Visuals here and in today's video we're going to be looking at how to create some god rays. We're going to be using Maya 2023 but the version doesn't matter you can do this in 2022 or 21 and you're going to learn the tools to be able to create something that looks like this. Okay so we have a light source and through the window we have these light shafts that are bursting through between the cracks in the blinds and they're wrapping around our character. The way in which we can do that inside of Maya is by creating an atmosphere. But you can create an atmosphere in two different ways and each way has its own unique benefits. So if you want to know both of those stick around for the whole video and I will show you. So I'm here inside of Maya and I have my render view open on the left hand side and I've just got a really simple scene here so I've got a corridor I've got a window with some blinds and I've got two characters and I got those characters from the content browser under people and I just grabbed them from here I have currently two lights in my scene they're both area lights one's blue and one is orange and I've just got a really sort of subtle background lighting here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another area light and just before we insert the atmosphere I'm going to create an area light and put, position this outside of the window I'm going to change it to a disk I'm going to increase the exposure and then I'm going to decrease the spread and I'm just going to go to something like 0.1 for a minute cool so the first method to get the atmosphere volume working is to actually go up to Arnold or your Arnold render settings and across into the Arnold renderer and down to where it says environment we've got this atmosphere and if we click on the checkerboard and then we create AI atmosphere volume that will give us a default value of zero and the temptation here is to put you know something like one in the density but what you will notice is that your scene gets sort of flooded out so a density of one is generally much much too high so depending on your scene scale I usually start at about 0 0.001 and I find that gives me a, a better sort of starting position so this first way to add an atmosphere you can see already um, is populating the whole scene where um, you can see our light down at the end of the corridor and we can see the atmosphere as the light um, is emitted down there so if you have a scene and you want to populate the whole scene with the atmosphere then this is probably the way to go for you with our area light I'm just going to decrease the spread and what you should notice when you do that is you're starting to get a bit more definition in those shafts coming through the window something else that we can add on top of this is to add in a light filter so with our area light if we go add and light decay and double click on that if we use far attenuation and change the far end you can see how we are changing the the length of the ray at um, essentially we're attenuating where where it stops so this is really nice that we can control this ray and how far it travels throughout our scene so I'm just going to shorten this a little bit I'm also going to increase the exposure a little and also just add in a little bit of spread here just so it softens those rays a touch and I'm just repositioning my light a, a touch as well
Cool. So that's the first method of adding in an atmosphere. And the second one, I will delete the atmosphere we have put in. So we no longer have that. And what we need to do for this one is essentially we're going to be using a shape to define where the atmosphere is going to be. So I'm going to use cube and we want to sort of treat this cube as being almost like a bounding box. So we're saying I want the atmosphere to be inside this cube and not outside of the cube. So to illustrate this, what I will do is I will move my second area light upwards and I'll keep this area light over here and I might just increase the intensity of these. Okay, so currently this wouldn't render as a volume. So we need to do two things. The first one is assign a new material. So assign new material and we're going to assign an AI standard surface. And if we go to the shading group, then under volume material, we want to go to Arnold shader, AI standard volume. Like the render settings, we will decrease the density. We also have lots of other settings in here that we can play around with. We've got scatter color, transparency, um, emission, etc., And we can plug in textures to all of those different slots as well. The final thing that we want to do with this cube is just tell Arnold that it needs to render it as a volume because at the moment it wouldn't, it would still be a solid object. So in the shape node for the object, if you come down to Arnold and then scroll down and we want to find volume attributes and then we have this step size that we need to increase. So I'm going to start at 0.5 and now as soon as we increase that, we should start to see our volume. Uh, rendering. So I'm going to hit the render button. Sorry, I had a little crash there, but I'm back with you. Sorry, I had a little crash there, but I'm back with you now. So what we have here is we've got our cube and we can see that inside the cube we have the volume. Outside of the cube we don't have the atmosphere. Sorry, had a little crash there. But I'm back with you. Sorry, had a little crash there, but I'm back with you now. So what we can see here is that inside the cube we have the atmosphere and outside the cube, no atmosphere. So if I just move the cube over to the light on the other side, you see that now the atmosphere is over here. OK, so this is a really nice way to be able to um, control exactly where your atmosphere in your scene is going to be. This tutorial or found it useful in any way, please like, subscribe and get notified to stay up to date with all our future releases. We also have a monthly newsletter, which I will link in the description below, where we will be giving away exclusive downloads and basically you can just keep up to date with all our tutorials and any projects that we've been working on here at Anella. In your welcome email pack, you will get a free Bialetti model that looks like this. So yeah, see you for the next one. Cheers.